All right, so we are getting into Greek mythology, and the first thing you might notice is, hey, wait a second, this is not the normal fill-in-the-blank looking notes. I know, it's a chart that I'm going to explain. So for this set of notes, it's a chart of all the major Greek gods and goddesses. I'm going to explain a little bit about them, but first things first. You may have heard me say this already, but in case... I haven't, or in case you need a reminder, I know some of you know lots about mythology, and that's awesome. However, this is something you need to know. Different authors put their own spin on things. And anytime we read a myth or a story or things like that, at the end, not in the middle, not during, not interrupting, but at the end... I will always say to you, has anyone read a version of this myth that was different and tell me the differences? And what you'll notice is that different authors put their own spin on things to make the stories a little different. A lot of times the plot is the same, but the details are different. So in this video and any other kind of thing that I show you, if you heard a different version of it. There's no need to rage. There's no need to be like, no, that's wrong, because that's not true. Um, these stories have changed based on different authors. So um, there are many versions that are considered okay. So like, like for example, if I'm talking about like Zeus and I was like, um, and, you know, he had this blue thing, and you're like, uh, uh, Mr. Kujic, um, it's green. Well, maybe in the version that you read, it's green, and in the version I read, it's blue. That doesn't matter. The plot is the same. So does everybody understand that? All right, so here we go with this chart of Greek gods and goddesses. So starting off here, um, we have two people. Gaia, you know from the last video, Mother Earth. Uh, and then this next one, Uranus, which is a funny, funny name to say. I know there's actually some people that are afraid to say Uranus, and it, I think it's funny. Like, that's that's just funny. And they'll, like, purposely mispronounce it and be like Uranus because they don't want to deal with it. But, like, just like when when we went over that country, Djibouti, some words are funny, and, and Uranus is a funny word. But anyway, um, so Uranus and Gaia. In, in Greek mythology, have these kids known as the Titans. Um, and they include two Titans, Cronus and Rhea. Now, Cronus and Rhea um, are brother and sister and end up getting together. And I know that's gross and disgusting. However, in mythology, um, you're going to see that a lot. Yeah. That doesn't mean the ancient Greeks did it. No, no, they're not getting together with their brothers and sisters. Um, it was, it's just something in mythology. It's gross. It's disgusting. But yeah, it, it's a thing. So, um, Cronus and Rhea are, are two of the Titans. And here's a kind of interesting thing. And there's different versions of different things. Um, so... Uranus, supposedly, in, in mythology, is a huge, huge jerk. And Cronus kills his father, Uranus. Um, and Cronus and Rhea um, are, are basically people that then hear a prophecy. And the prophecy says that to Cronus and Rhea, one of your kids is going to kill you. Cronus. So you would think if Cronus hears that one of his kids is going to kill him, he wouldn't have any kids. Uh, yeah, that doesn't happen. So Cronus and Rhea have kids, but every kid that they have, Cronus takes the baby, swallows it whole. Now, I know what you're thinking. First of all, ew, gross. Second of all, um, is he killing the babies? Well, no, because 
first of all, this is a myth. Like, this isn't true, so it's a story. And second of all, in these myths, these 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 gods and goddesses are what's considered immortal, meaning that they cannot die. They could be trapped in places and, like, fade away, but they can't die. So, um, Cronus and Rhea have five kids at first. There's Hestia, Poseidon, Hera, Hades, Demeter. And after each time they're born, swallows it whole. Cronus is like, oh, time for another baby meal and swallows it whole. Well, Rhea gets pregnant again. And this time she's like, I don't want my husband to eat my children. Rational thought, if you think about it. Like, okay, one point for Rhea. So supposedly she goes down to ancient Greece and secretly gives birth to a baby called Zeus. Now, she has to trick Cronus, so she supposedly takes a rock, wraps it up in, in like blankets and stuff, and is like, oh, Cronus, I had the baby, and Cronus is like, all right, here we go again. He's done it five times already. Remember, he's not chewing. He's just swallowing it like a pill, so swallows it whole, it's a rock. He thinks it's baby Zeus. Meanwhile, baby Zeus is on um, Earth being secretly raised by um, some Greeks. Now, oh, I, 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 I forgot to mention that. So, like, Hestia, Poseidon, Hera, Hades, Demeter, they're not dead. They're just chilling in Cronus's stomach. Um, so, Zeus grows up, and he's pretty awesome. And word gets out that uh, this, this person has some abilities that are godly. Um, so Rhea confesses to Cronus and says, you know, I, I didn't let you eat our son. I tricked you, and uh, he's alive, and he's pretty cool. So Zeus meets Cronus, and you would think Cronus would be like, die, Zeus, the prophecy, like, you're gonna kill me. But no, Cronus is like, you know what? He is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Go, Zeus. Well, Zeus hears that he has brothers and sisters inside of Cronus. And he is like, that's not cool. Like, that's not cool. So, he tricks Cronus into drinking this potion or drink that causes him to puke. And out comes Hestia, Poseidon, Hera, Hades, and Demeter covered in vomit. Like he pukes them right up. Yeah, that's gross and disgusting, I know. So it's now Zeus and the puke kids. Um, and Cronus is furious. He's like, Zeus, you tricked me. Now I'm going to try and kill all of you. Um, and it leads to this epic battle between Zeus and his brothers and sisters and the Titans. Zeus is victorious. Um, and he becomes the leader of this group of people, as you see, known as the Olympians that live on Mount Olympus. So I'm going to talk you through each of these different things. So um, Hestia. Oh, and so just so you know, What's in parentheses here, that's their, their name in Latin. Um, the ancient Romans believed in the same gods of the ancient Greeks. So when we get to Rome, we're not going to need to do like Roman mythology because it's the same exact thing as Greek mythology, just with different names. So Hestia is the goddess of the hearth, like a fireplace, protector of the home and family. And there's not a lot of myths about her. There's Poseidon. I'll get to him in a second. And Hades, I'm going to get to right now. So, and then I'll talk about the other ones. So Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades decide they need to determine who is going to be in charge of what. So there's like the sky, there's the sea, and there's the underworld. And supposedly they gamble. And it's like whoever rolls the highest gets the first pick. So Zeus gets the best roll. And he says, I'll take the sky. Poseidon had the second best role, so he says, I'll take the sea. 
Hades is stuck with the underworld, which supposedly is why, in a lot of myths, Hades is messing with the people in Greece um, because he's kind of annoyed that he's stuck in the underworld. So uh, here's the other thing. Um, the, the gods and goddesses multitask. They're not just in charge of, like, one thing. So Poseidon is the god of the sea. Um, oh, and these symbols are are... These are symbols that's here. So, like, Hestia's symbol is fire. Poseidon is, his symbol is a trident. And if you don't know what a trident is, Bum's going to come up. Named after this. This is a trident. That's his symbol right here. So, yeah. Um, he's also the god of horses, supposedly in, in Greek mythology, he's the one responsible for horses being in Greece. Obviously, we know that's not the case. Um, Zeus, king of the gods, um, he is in charge of the sky, the weather. He's also the ruler of, he's like the boss of Mount Olympus. He is the, the king of the gods. Uh, Mount Olympus is a mountain in Greece. Ooh, let me show you. Um, and it was something that, like, the ancient Greeks believed that the gods and goddesses lived on Mount Olympus. And it was like in the distance. So like you could see Mount Olympus, but let's type in Mount Olympus. Um, you could see Mount Olympus. However, um, you wouldn't be able to climb Mount Olympus because it, it's a mountain. And in ancient times, you don't have the equipment to climb mountains. So there's Mount Olympus. You'll see it as it zooms out. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd you go, Mount Olympus? Hold on. I lost it. Mount Olympus. There it is. Right here. There it is. Mount Olympus. So you could see it from parts of Greece, but you wouldn't be able to climb it. So if you're ever wondering, so like there's the Greeks, there's the mountain. So if you're ever wondering like, why didn't they just climb Mount Olympus and be like, what's up gods? Um, so number one, they would die because they don't have mountain climbing equipment. And and they would be, they're like fearful of the gods. They would, they believe that if they ever saw the gods and goddesses in their godly form, it would instantly kill them, which is why in a lot of myths, these gods and goddesses can transform into different beings. A lot of times they transform into humans. Sometimes they transform into animals, all that kind of stuff. All right. So next we have Hera. She is queen of the gods, wife to Zeus. She is the protector of marriage. And it's pretty ironic because I know this is going to sound like a TV show, but welcome to Greek mythology. Um, Zeus cheats on her like a lot and not just like cheats on her like has these affairs and gets multiple women pregnant and they have babies that don't belong to Hera so she is not happy um a lot of times and if you're like why doesn't she get divorced why doesn't she just attack Zeus well because Zeus is king of the gods so she's kind of stuck in this this rough position um Hades as I mentioned is god of the underworld um, then we have Demeter, who is the goddess of the harvest and grain. Um, and there's a myth that we're going to read in another class that, that you might know that involves her daughter, Persephone. All right, so these are the six puke babies. No, <laughs> Zeus and the puke babies. These are the six um, gods and goddesses that start things off. Well, then, as the gods and goddesses start to have a family, there becomes some children so let me talk first about Ares. so Ares is the son of zeus and hera he is the god of war and he is a huge jerk nobody likes him in fact here's another kind of piece of a myth so zeus is having all these babies with all these other women um and hera's one kid with zeus is Ares that nobody likes so, 
Hera says to Zeus, like, we're having another baby. I'm tired of you cheating on me. You have all these, like, great gods and goddess kids with other women. And our one child, huge jerk. We're having another baby. So they have another baby. And born is baby Hephaestus. Now, Hephaestus is born with a deformed foot. And you know the, the saying, like, oh, no babies are ugly? Hephaestus apparently is a very ugly baby. And Hera gets so upset with this that here she finally has her second kid and she doesn't like the way he looks. So she takes baby Hephaestus and throws him off Mount Olympus. Now, he's a god. He doesn't get injured or anything. Um, but as he grows up, he has some really cool abilities. He is the god of the blacksmiths. Like, he can invent all these different kinds of things. And when Hera sees this, she's like, oh, you know, my son turned out to be pretty good. And he comes back to Mount Olympus, forgives his mother and all that kind of stuff. All right. On to some of these other kids and this crazy stories. All right. So first up, we have Athena. She is the goddess of wisdom. Um, now, you see here that this says war. And some of you might be like, Mr. Kujic, you just said Ares is the god of war. Yes, here's the difference. Ares is the god of war, like violence, like pew pew kind of war. Um, well, I guess it's not pew pew in ancient times. It would be stabby stabby, I guess. Um, in um, Athena's role in this, is she's the goddess of war in terms of strategy because she's the goddess of wisdom. Also arts and crafts. Now, supposedly, this is another myth about... Um, Athena, again, you might have heard a different version of this. So there goes Zeus again, getting people pregnant. And he gets this, this, this woman pregnant. And he's like, oh, I can't tell Hera again. She's going to be upset. So supposedly he pulls a Cronus and swallows this pregnant lady whole. Now, um, supposedly then what happens is after a good amount of time, one day, Zeus gets this pounding headache, and he goes to Hephaestus, and he's like, you got to do something. Cut my head open. I've never had a headache like this. There's something going on. Um, and Hephaestus cuts Zeus's head open, and out pops Athena, out of Zeus's head, um, supposedly screaming a war cry. Um, now, there's different versions of that myth. There's some that, like, it was turned into, like, the mother was turned into a fly, all that kind of stuff. Again, Different versions of things, but bottom line, um, in Greek mythology, Athena comes from Zeus's head. So she is the namesake of Athens, um, and you can see all the different things that are in her department. Next, we have the twins, twinsies, Apollo and Artemis. Now, funny thing about twins in ancient Greece, and I know there's some twins listening to this. I got some bad news for you. In ancient Greece, if twins were born, they killed both babies. I know. So messed up. The reason why is they thought more than one birth at a time was unnatural. So they were like, two babies can't be born in the same delivery. Like, no. Um, so they thought it was a sign of evil and they killed both of them. So... Sorry, those of you that are twins. You wouldn't have made it in ancient Greece. Good thing it's not ancient times. Um, but that didn't apply to these two, because these two twins, because they are immortal. So we have Apollo, god of light, truth, healing, archery, and music. Um, we have Artemis, the goddess of the hunt and the moon. Um, so they are... Um, from Zeus and another woman. Again, not Hera. Aphrodite is a very weird story. So here's supposedly, and there's different versions of this. Um, so probably the, the, the most popular version, and I don't mean popular, like, like just like the most famous version of this, is Zeus, when he defeats Cronus, supposedly he chops Cronus's body up and throws it into the sea because that's a normal thing to do. Um, and all of a sudden the sea starts bubbling and C 
Cronus, this huge male jerk, all of a sudden transforms into the complete opposite, like a brand new being that is the complete opposite. So instead of being this huge male jerk, we have this beautiful female goddess, Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty. Um, then we have Hermes, who is the messenger god. Um, we have Dionysus. He is the god of wine. And um, interesting story I'm going to tell you about Aphrodite. So here's the situation. Essentially what happens is there's like a like an ancient Greece version of like a dating show, I guess, like the the Bachelorette or one of those shows where like Aphrodite wants to find a husband. So there's all these people like um, Apollo and Hermes and all this kind of stuff. And Hera goes to her son Hephaestus and says, why don't you try and date Aphrodite? And Hephaestus is like, me, what can I do? Blah, blah, blah. So Hephaestus goes on the show. Um, and, you know, Hermes and Apollo are like promising her all these things. And Hephaestus says, all I can promise you is that I'm going to be a good husband. And apparently that's all Aphrodite wants. Hephaestus wins. He gets married to Aphrodite. But there is a sick twist to this. So while Hephaestus is married to Aphrodite, Aphrodite routinely cheats on him with his brother Ares. She likes the bad boys, apparently. So Hephaestus suspects this and supposedly sets a trap like when they were kissing like they're captured and then all the gods and goddesses laugh and like shame her and all this kind of stuff which is also kind of weird like it, it there's a lot of stuff in greek mythology that when you hear it you're like yeah that's pretty messed up so yeah that's just a little taste of things about these gods and goddesses um you're gonna learn a lot more about them um in this unit so there you go